Hey, today I got two old nasty ass beat up junk RCA radios, probably from like 1938, 1939, 1940. Very mint, very mint. Extremely museum grade condition here. I mean, look at this power cord. Just look at this beauty. It is just absolutely in perfect condition. Perfect condition. The top isn't even held on. And, you know, this is how you tell radio's baked. Uh, the This is a rectifier and audio output tubes heating the wood and scorching it black over many many hours of use baked baked and here's the fine condition smoker's choice uh, you can tell it's got this it's got that yellow color on the metal that is smoker's choice um baked look at the coil look at that coil that thing is baked nasty well the tuning works baked looks like a modern wire looks like the Ooh, it looks like the base is loose on the tube, but no, look at that. It looks like the tube is baked. So, I wonder if the speaker is any good. Doesn't seem like it's rubbing. But that doesn't matter because the entire radio is falling apart. All the wood's all... You know, might, maybe I could glue it back together, but I don't think there's much hope here. Gl dial glass is about to fall out. Hope the speaker hasn't been, like, pushed in or anything. Um, just baked. This is just baked. What's that? A radio phono switch? Record player? Input a plug for some reason? Uh, serial, uh, model number A-1. Look at that. Well, I'm gonna plug it in anyway, so we'll see if that shorts out. Baked. So here we go. Oh, and wait, let's take a look at this one first. And then this is the second one. It's in better condition. That's right. Better condition. Just as torched. It's got something glued on the top of it. Ooh, radiation symbol. That's how you know it's high-tech and futuristic. Cool. Anyway. And around the back, we see that there is an ass load of wire. And even better yet, the wire is disintegrating into dust as soon as I touch it. All of the rubber wires are disintegrating. And then even better... This is the sloppiest soldering I have ever seen anywhere in my life. This is absolutely... God, that's hideous. Are, can we look at this? Look at, look at this. You call that a solder connection? Jeez, what was that done with a blowtorch or something? Oh, man. Oh. I hope the tube filaments haven't been blown up because that's what happens on these one volt radios. The filaments will get blown out when you connect the batteries wrong. So, ooh, here's more. Look at that, look at that connection. That's UL approved. Oh, look, here's a, oh, so this is the original wire here. It says ground. So it looks like they just spliced the antenna and ground wire. Jeez, why do you need like a, a fat-ass, thick ground wire like that. What is this, like a 
18 gauge or a 16 gauge I don't know it's thick and then we got these are the battery plugs and boy oh boy <laughs> uh, let's see though it looks like we got something in here what could this Ooh, it's original RCA paperwork huh that's kind of cool never seen that in a radio before actual paperwork that came with it when it was bought wow cool unpacking and installing unpack with care so not to damage the finish of the cabinet yeah i mean you wouldn't want to damage this beautiful finish would you right Cool. So there's your instructions. And here we've got something else. Maybe a warranty. Yep, guarantee. 90 day guarantee, huh? That's kind of cool. And here we have how to connect the batteries. Now, does it tell me what voltages these are? one and a half volt a battery and two uh 45 volt b batteries so what's that about 90 volts and one and a half volts well that's kind of typical and what are our tubes here uh 1a7 1n5 1h5 and 1c5 so these are one volt and i don't know what this is what's this speaker is this a speaker oh it is indeed the speaker plugs and more ghetto splice jobs on the speaker oh god this radio is going to be a beauty to try and get this piece of turd working again the tuner still works it's got all the tubes yeah, whatever. This is not the main attraction, though, because it uses batteries, which is a shame. I hate battery radios, but uh, we'll try and get it working anyway, later. But for now, let's plug this masterpiece in right here. Might have to do. Might have to roll out an EOL on this thing. This thing is deserving of an EOL to finally you know, finish it off. It's it's already half EOL'd. It's like half EOL'd already with smoke and falling apart wood. Okay, here. We're gonna plug this puppy right into my light bulb. And if it's shorted, the light bulb is gonna light up. Okay. So it looks like the cord isn't shorted. Isn't that a miracle? That the cord isn't shorted in like 50 different places. Okay, we're gonna turn it on. Come on, baby, cross your fingers. Where does the smoke? Please let out the smoke when I turn it on. Maybe it'll just work instead. Ooh, uh, uh, a light bulb just went out. Isn't that cool? In the meantime, oh, it's, it works? Are you joking me? Come on, I thought this was gonna be a repair video. Tone. Finally. Okay, maybe it doesn't work. It's squealing now. Enjoy your trip no matter what happens. And uh, so it ended up probing this row border for the past month. It sounds like the speaker's rubbing. Hear that? Hamas, Salah, Bowery, and Network. Either the speaker is bad or the audio output tube is baked. Ironically, 
Could be either. Elon Musk just Ooh, Elon Musk. Cool. by Iranian dictator Ali Khamenei. After sports, some festive witches hit the water this weekend for a good cause. Bakes. Hear that audiophile crisp sound? And from Sportsnet Radio, here is Alan Kevion. Audio file sound. not going to get anything, right? We need a good antenna. No, nothing. Baked. Those teams are still a few hours away and the NLDS team will be It's not getting hot. The capacitor isn't getting hot. So amazing, right? And it's working. Interesting. How do these stupid push buttons work? Look at this contraption. Oh, so it physically move, yeah. It physically turns the tuning capacitor. Yeah, but it, look, it has like a, it doesn't work very well. What the hell? They're not really tuned to anything. Who cares? Push buttons are junk. They never work right on like almost every radio I have that has these, they don't work. These things are stupid. Oh, did I break it? No. It just unscrews. Yep, speaker is... ...not allow that to happen, but is there a fear that they're more concerned that there might be some of the other regional states may get engaged? So, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. What do I do with this thing? Whatever. It's baked. <laughs> Have I said that enough? It's baked. So, we have that, but I think it's all a question of putting your... So I'm taking it apart here. And this is something you see occasionally in these radios from the late 30s and later. It's this asbestos sheet here. And, uh, you know, I could leave it in there, but, uh, well, it's, you know what? It's simple. You know, people are always going on about, oh my God, you're going to die from asbestos and all that. But come on, like, uh, you just get some, get one of these things and get it nice and wet to keep all the dust down and then just get it out of here. Just get these staples up and put it in a trash bag and there you go. Because if you leave it in here, you're gonna be always worrying about it. You know, if I leave this in here, it's, I'm gonna be putting the chassis in and out of here and it's gonna be getting all in the air and everything. So just get it out of here. Just get these staples out and get rid of it forever. So easy. See, once I get it all nice and wet, none of the dust is going to get all in the air. Just comes off in one nice piece and can go right in the trash. So nice and simple. And uh, see, it's nice and clean under here too. Yeah, sure. 
if you're if you're OCD and you don't want to get a bit of water on your radio, it, you might not do it. But uh, this is a piece of crap. I don't care about getting water in it. It's basically ready for the dump anyway. I just want to resurrect it. Put some just put some glue on this cabinet, slap it back together, do the minimum job to just make it look decent. I mean, look at this thing is so flimsy. Every joint is coming apart, so whatever. Uh, let's look underneath the chassis here. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, no, no, it's got replacements, all right. I see the, uh, the uh, J hooked in capacitors replacements replacement these are those um ooh made in canada that's kind of rare um these are those um ceramic uh ones that have the ceramic uh thingy around the capacitor and then they have sealed it with some epoxy and these are the original papers from RCA There's not that much in here, so not too surprising that it still works. I mean, it needs a new cord. It needs a new cord for sure. There's your speaker. I, I still don't know if the speaker's bad or the audio output is baked. Here's a piece of the cabinet. This is a ghetto workbench, and here's the top. Better view. Here's a piece of the the uh, felt from here. Well, I guess I'll just clean it up. I'm just gonna clean this thing up. Look, it's got cobwebs. I'm just gonna clean this thing up a bit, and then put some glue in the cabinet, and then replace the cord. And there's not that much to do here. Put some glue in this 5Y3 here that's loose. See that? If you're trying to pull this out, you might rip the rip the tube apart right there. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... ...6SQ7 GT. Made in England. Ooh, it must be worth $600 because it's made in England. Audiophile sound, right? From your AM radio. Cool. That's a small-ass capacitor, though. That's got to be like two eights or two tens, maybe. No, probably like two eights because it's got a field coil. So it doesn't really need fat capacitors. Got rust on the transformer. Alright, I'll get back to it. I'll shut up now. Hey everybody, welcome to Ghetto Woodworking 101. I'm your host, Billy Wanker. And today I'm going to be showing you how to repair this 1939 RCA Victor radio cabinet here. So step one is to take your, your wood and... Make sure it all fits all like it's supposed to and it isn't warped. And it's got a bit of bit of uh, edge crap here. You just want to break that off. It's the old glue residue. You just want to break off that sharp edge there for your finished surface. And then you just want to make sure it all fits. And it lines up. See here, the edge was the uh, side of the cabinet was pushed in. So now it lines up. And as you can see, that joint is fitting. This joint is kind of fitting. It's kind of broken. And uh, now it uh, the the corner doesn't line up. So I don't know what's going on there, but you can just kind of. God, this is so warped and beat up and. I don't know what to how to get this corner to line up here. Anyway, I think the next step is to proceed with some glue. 
uh, heavy amounts of wood glue uh, in the cabinet. You know, you want to put a nice solid amount, nice amount here of wood glue. Who cares if it spills all over? This thing's turd condition. Yeah, just a nice... You know, this is how they did it originally. I've seen lots of radios where there's wood glue spilling inside the cabinet. All right, and we just want to put it along here and hope it doesn't leak into the dial. Okay. And then we gonna do the old finger method to spread it out all nice. like so this is very professional by the way extremely professional all right all righty now we are going to take the top and get it all in place. I think the top's warped. And there, this, this side fits nicely. Yeah. But this side is warped. What's up with that? Scheisse. <laughs> doesn't want to go together. It's all warped and beat up. I'm gonna need to get some clamps. Good thing I have them right here. All right. So your next step is, wow, look at that finish on the front. That is oh, 10 out of 10 right there. 10 out of 10 for cleanliness of the wood glue application. There we go. I don't know why this stupid front corner doesn't fit. Yeah, the entire top is warped. Oh, Shaisa is, in, is right. <laughs> Shaisa, nine, nine, nine. I don't know any other German words, so that's about it, but. Yeah, it's, it's just, it needs clamps. Ah, oh, shit, my phone's telling me the battery's low. Great. Anyway. Gotta hurry it up now. Gotta hurry up this video. Before my battery dies. There we go. Oh, shit. What just broke? Something just popped. Oh, it's the other side just popped out. How am I gonna do this? If I push, it's like the Three Stooges filing cabinet gag. You know, you close one drawer, the other one flies open in your face. Yeah. Ugh. Whatever. Whatever, man. This table's too small. Like, I wonder why I never work outside because Soldering inside is unhealthy, but then it's because this stupid table is like two square feet. No wonder I never want to work outside. You can't fit anything bigger than this radio out here. All right. Oh, shit. It's not lined up. God damn it. This is ghetto woodworking. Very much ghetto. There. Now stay. I command it. Good. It's looking okay at the moment. <sighs> All right, it's looking okay. Still not very
What did you expect for a res resurrection video, huh? This is as good as it's going to get. I'm not going for restoration here. So there we have it. Looking better than it was. I guess I'll set this aside while we look at the other radio. I'm gonna take this other one apart in a minute. I'm just gonna put some more wood glue in the bottom because there's the bottom's coming apart too down here. Yeah, see, oh my god, this bottom joint is about to come apart too. Great, I'll have to Put it along the bottom here. Maybe it'll work its way in or something. All right, done for now. Done with the wood working. All right, well, that's all drying. We're gonna take a look at the second radio. This one looks much nicer. It's in better shape, but this uses batteries, which is too bad because those can be a pain in the ass. Well, maybe not. The veneer is kind of bulging out at the bottom here. Very basic radio, power, volume, tuning from 55 to 170. I don't know why they always put it in meters, too. That's so useless. Meters. <laughs> what are those? Anyway, it's got crap. Yeah, whatever. And we already showed the back, so we're going to take it apart. It's got the knobs that these other RCAs use. These knobs are kind of nice. I could just take these and put them on something else if I wanted to. Just clean them up. Yep. And, uh... Speaker cloth is in good condition. Oh yeah, all that junk falling out of it. Where's my screwdriver? This, this one's got four screws holding it in. Wow, high class model. I bet there's almost nothing inside this. This is a battery radio, so there's no power supply, no power transformer, no filter caps, no rectifier tube, no dropping resistors, you know, no filter choke, no field coil speaker, nothing. So this should be very simple inside. I almost just want to cut all these stupid wires off the back, but then I probably wouldn't know what, what is what. So I'll leave it for now. All right. We will flip it up again. I mean, it's cool that it has instructions with it. That's kind of... Yep, this is very light, very cheap construction. Oh yeah, oh, the speaker, I gotta unplug the speaker. Also, I love the fact that, here's something that always makes me laugh. This always makes me laugh. I've seen so many radios that have this. You have a speaker in the cabinet that unplugs. It could be a four pin plug, it could be a six pin plug, it could be an octal plug. Idiots that work on radios, they don't even see the plug. These are plug-in wires, dumbass, but no. They just cut the wires and splice them on later. Why the hell, I do not know, but I've seen this in so many radios. They don't unplug the speaker, they just cut the damn wires every single time. I don't get it. Anyway, here's our chassis. It is the lightest chassis I have ever, it's got my, my stupid scissors caught in it, so now it's like 10% heavier. <laughs> This is the lightest chassis I've, you know, it is portable. They could have just stuck a handle on the top and called it portable, I guess. So there it is. So let me guess, let me guess at what we've got here. 
what we've got like oscillator mixer if you know detector first audio and audio output tube and underneath bam that is not much in there is there you know there's almost enough space i could put a power supply maybe maybe a transformer with some diodes underneath or something some capacitors ooh that's extremely ghetto right there that's that's not even soldered it's not even soldered so i almost bet this would work I have the one volt power supply. I just, I just don't have anything that puts out a clean 90 volts DC like this wants. But hey, we could, could power the, see if the, check the filaments. See if the filaments are good in this thing. I think I will. So, all right. First thing I'm going to do is cut these stupid wires, the stupid antenna and ground wires that have the horrible solders. They need to go. What was this, soldered by a five-year-old using wire he found in the trash in 1953? Yes, I think it was. Oh, all these wires are disintegrating. So there, that, that gets rid of most of the mess. Most of the mess is just these two antenna and ground wires. It's nice copper. It's probably like three dollars of copper in these wires. <sighs> aggravating. Tangled wires are aggravating. Okay, there. These antenna and ground wires gone. Now what do we have? We have the battery wires. It doesn't look like anyone has messed with these, so this thing might work. So let's check the instructions here on where to connect the batteries. All right. So, the one that, the one, the two plugs that are connected together are the B plus and the small plug is the one and a half volt. Apparently, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> so here's that one and a half volt plug. All I'm gonna do Put it on continuity here flip the power switch on and hope we get some kind of resistance either the wires are shorted in this cord which which it looks like it is so but we're getting 500 ohms 300 400 600 500 whatever so these wires are shorted. Where is it? Oh, right here. Look at that. Right there. Dead shorted wires. Let's just... You know, trying to fix the short is only going to create more shorts because whenever I move the wires, it's just turning to dust instantly. So there. Now I've got those separated. Let's see what we get. Oh, you can't see that. There. Let's see what we get. Nothing. Let's turn it off here. Move the wires around. We're getting nothing. If we turn it on, we get also nothing. So are you telling me? That's the shorted wires. So are you telling me we get nothing? Are these tubes all been blown apart? Really? That's good news. What a real winner this thing is. How? Like, no one has messed with the plug. Maybe some idiot just said, oh, I'll just, uh... I don't know. Let's... Let's check them one by one. So little... I don't know what the pinout is, but hey... We can estimate here that it's two and seven. 
and we are getting half an ohm. That looks good. So we'll go on to the next one, which has a loose top cap. Oh, that's always a joy to try and get the get it out without breaking the tube. It's a uh, come on, get out. It's so tight, it doesn't want to come out. Fine, we'll go with this one. There, there we go. Crusty tube socket. So here's the, whatever the hell that is. We're gonna check it right now with my... So it looks like the tubes are good. Now, where do I get my 90 volt power supply? What am I gonna do about that? Because I bet this works, it's just, the power supply is always the headache with these. Welcome everybody. Today I'm gonna, welcome to a extremely ghetto power supply design. I'm your host, Billy T. Wanker. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to build a radio 90 volt power supply with that ghetto components from TVs and some capacitors and a block of garbage wood. Yeah, so, God, that's hideous. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to be building the shittiest power supply possible because I don't know how to build voltage-regulated fancy, fancy pants power supplies. Come on. So we're going to use a bridge rectifier going to a whole ass load of capacitors here to filter it out, and in between each capacitor, there'll be a resistor, hopefully to drop the voltage down, you know, because... the Really, this is the simplest power supply possible, right? The It's regulated by the load. The more load there is in the power supply, the lower the voltage goes. So hopefully, using some random-ass resistors, it'll be close enough. I don't care if it's 100 volts. I don't care if it's 80 volts. As long as it's close enough. I just want it to be not... Whatever, we'll see how this goes. So Let's get started with the ghetto construction. I'm going to use old screws and some hot glue, you know, just make it as ghetto as possible, right? So, also, yeah, this bridge rectifier is going to be able to provide probably like a hundred times more current than this radio could ever use, but yeah. Okay, well, this is the design I'm going to go with for the first test, and it is just ghetto and sloppy and lazy as possible. I did put a fuse. You know, a one amp fuse just in case, in case, uh, you know, the one amp fuse isn't really going to stop the radio from self-destructing though, because one amps is a lot, but it's a fuse, because why not? Very simple design, very classy, elegant, very safe, you know, very, very safe, you know, not like you could easily electro electrocute yourself with this design, it's just very safe. So what I'm going to do now for to prep this for testing... The wires have got to go. The wires have got to go. This is not going to... Well, actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. The filament wires is the yellow and the whatever color that is. So this is... These are turning to dust, okay. But these look decent. The B-plus wires look decent. This isn't turning to dust. So what, I might just replace the filament wires and leave this alone, because this isn't bad. Not that bad yet. This is pretty solid. The ends are kind of bad, but the rest is good. So I can just chop these plugs off and connect it to the power supply. And then the filament wiring, well, I might just leave that for now and just risk it powering it up like this. I want to just see this thing work, do something. So I just want to power it up. So we are going to do that now. Okay, we're on the we're, we're about to test it. Boy, this is the biggest mess ever. What a what a ugh. Anyway, the tubes are heated. You can see them glowing. And yeah, I've heard you can't see these glow, but this is an early battery radio, so can just barely see them glowing. 
Yeah, there you can see it there. Ah. Oh. So yeah, this is an early battery radio. On the later ones from the 50s, you can't see it, but this is 1938, 39, I don't know. I had to bypass the power switch. It was completely dead. Um, I got this power supply here for the filaments. Uh, and then I have my ghetto power supply here for the B+, and I'm going to use this to bring it to 90 starting now. So... climbing maybe there's a capacitor reforming or maybe it's just charging all of those big ones there <sighs> I think it's just very slowly charging those capacitors Maybe my wiring's a mess. That could be the case, too. I hope there's no shorts right here where it goes in. That would be bad. Ooh, do I hear something? I think I hear a slight crackle from this beaker. I do, it's a slight little crackling from the speaker. So we're only 13, so we gotta keep going here. So is something shorted? Like why is it the voltage so low? Is something shorted? Is the filter capacitor shorted or something? We're only at 24. We have 90 going in. What's shorted? Hey, though, it's, uh, it's, it's doing a little humming. Huh. And there's a slight buzz when I touch the antenna wire, so I almost wonder if that's shorted, that filter cap there. Only 25 volts, really. I'm going to bring it all the way up then to a 120. Maybe I used uh, two, two high-value resistors. I used two 15K resistors. It could just be the voltages, the load. There's too much load, so it's pulling the voltage down all the way. Thirty four volts. Ooh, I hear AM radio static now. Amazing. It's actually gonna work. Let me get an antenna. Let me get an antenna on this thing here. It might actually work. Not very loud, but Hey, it works. See, I just knew it would work because battery radios, that other one I've got over there is baked from thousands of hours of use. But battery radios, people didn't use them a lot because, well, batteries were expensive. You wouldn't just leave your radio playing all day like with an AC-powered radio, which is why these are usually in much better shape. They don't have a lot of hours on them.
足點，唔好隨便踎佢，將自己先啊放一邊先，咁、嗯啊、就可以即係避免損壞。That's pretty cool. I'm impressed that it works so well. And the voltage is only half of what it should be right now. It's kind of distorted. So I'm going to redo the power supply, get the voltage right. I mean, it's not humming at all, so those capacitors are working. I just need the right resistor values, and this thing should be good to go with uh, proper power supplies. Well, okay, here we are, and I, I was filming the end of this video, and then my battery died, so... So I kind of just kept working for a few hours, and here we are. I finished the battery eliminator, and as you can hear, it's it's working. So I don't know. I'll take you through my ghetto design here for this thing. It works. It works. Um, <laughs> it's very, you know. It's not isolated. The output isn't isolated. So if you touch the the chassis, you can get a nice shock on it. But uh, I don't think that's even important because just look at this thing. It's so so dangerous as it is. Who cares if the chassis is live when you have this sitting out here? Anyway, this is the kind of thing that you build only for you to use because, you know, if anyone else was going to try and use this, they'd probably shock themselves. Uh, but hey, who cares? Who care? Who gives a shit about safety, eh? Um, so what? Your power comes in. It goes through a to a uh, bridge rectifier here, capacitor, and it comes into this transformer here. Um, from the bridge rectifier output, the positive comes up to a capacitor, a 5.6k, and then it comes to another capacitor, and then off here, the output goes to the 90 volt positive. The negatives are all tied together. They go through a uh, 1.5 amp fuse uh, for no reason. This extra stage of capacitor here and resistor do nothing. I just left this here because I glued the capacitor to the board and I didn't want to rip it off. So I just left this here. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, and then the complicated part is the 1.5 volts because it has to be very precise because, well... It's 1.5 volts, right? So 2 volts would be way too high. And, you know, even if it's just even 1 volt is way, way too low. So it has to be right on 1.5. So anyway, it comes into this transformer, which puts out 16 volts. Uh, then the bridge rectifier capacitor steps it up to like 20. It comes into a 5 volt regulator. Uh, I think I got this out of an old... TV or something. It's a 5 volt regulator. Um, the output of this comes to a very big capacitor. It's like, what, 15,000 UF at 30 volts. The It also goes to a... Then the 5 volt output of that comes to this light bulb, which is just like a power light. Uh, it kind of is an unnecessary load on the regulator, I'll admit, but 
I can't power the light bulb off the transformer because it's like 20 volts. So I had to use the 5 volts from the regulator. I could have just not had a light bulb, but you know what? Why not? I had this laying around. Um, the positive from the 5 volts comes through my precision resistor network here, which drops it down to 1.5 volts. Uh, this took a while to get this just right, to get it right on 1.5. So this is kind of ugly and messy, but it, it's, uh, it works. And then it comes to this old um, speaker plug from an old amplifier, which I use to connect the wires to the radio. The radio I did nothing to. All I did was put new wires to it. I did absolutely nothing to it. And it works. It works. It doesn't work that. It doesn't work that great. But you know what? Consider what what it is. It's a really, really basic, primitive radio with a ge very ghetto power supply that I could probably improve. But uh, there we go. I'm gonna wrap this one up for now. Oh yeah, and I also did a bunch of gluing on the cabinet of this one here. The I did. I'm gluing the top veneer on because it's all coming off. And we'll get back to that later.